how to control horn flies with dung beetles in five steps. I am Jim Elizondo from Real World Ranching, where our goal is to help you maximize your profitability while you improve your land the fastest. Welcome back to another episode of Fat Cow's Fat Wallet Podcast. I hope you're having a great week. And today we're going to talk about something that is transcendental, improving your land at a low cost with management. I am going to talk about how to control horn flies with dung beetles in five steps and the importance of not using insecticides on our land or on our livestock. This is essential as there are always unintended consequences when we try to stop a problem, horn fly with insecticides. Research has proven that without dung beetles, there would be a 30% reduction in forest production due to the dung not being buried and its nutrients volatilizing to the air. This means you can increase your pasture productivity and stocking rate just by having a healthy dung beetle population. What does this mean to your bottom line? A huge deal. It is very profitable to stop using insecticides and find a way to increase your dung beetle population. My total grazing students know now this and what to do instead of using insecticides or dewormers that will also kill the dung beetles. I will show you today the five steps you need to take to reduce or even to eliminate the hornfly economic impact on your cattle without using insecticides. When I go back in time to when I started regenerating land with cattle, I well remember trying to control hornflies on my cattle. Each hornfly bites your cattle an average of 30 times per day. Of course, your cattle will suffer. And it became a never ending battle as the more I applied insecticide to control the hornfly, the more it appeared hornflies I got in, on the cows. Now I know what the problem was and how to control hornfly without insecticides. I have learned much over the years and I want to share this with you in this episode. This is of immense value. Please pay close attention and listen with an open mind. This may be different than what you have been told in the past, but I believe this will resonate and agree with what, what you are observing in your daily work. If you know somebody that has struggled with horn flies affecting their cow performance, maybe despairing of having to use more or different insecticides to control them and not having much success, they may be benefit from hearing this. Introduce them to this podcast, please. I know this can help and I would love to help as many people as possible to regenerate their land so they can achieve bountiful production at very low cost. So here are the steps. Step number one. Stop using insecticides and deworming with products of the ivermectin family in your cattle. We need to know that the dung beetle competes for fresh manure with the horn fly larva. So the more dung beetles we have, the less horn flies we will have. The horn fly lays their eggs in fresh manure immediately after it has been deposited in the land by the cow. So the horn fly flies from the cow to the manure, deposits their eggs, and then goes back to the cow to keep biting it. So it, while insecticides may kill the dreaded horn fly, they will also kill the dung beetles or their larvae. And because the time it takes for horn flies to complete their life cycles into eggs are deposited to a mature horn fly that will bite your cows again is so short, 10 to 20 days, there will be many generations in a season and they can build resistance to different insecticides, which will make them less effective. Plus you need to reapply sooner, increasing your cost and reducing effectiveness. Dung beetles on the other part have a much longer life cycle and lay less eggs. So it requires time to build a population. If you are one of my total grazing students, you know now the importance of biodiversity in controlling insect pests. Number two, grow a large population of dung beetles in your property as fast as possible. Each adult gazelle dung beetle can bury around 10 grams of fresh manure per day. And we need the fresh manure to be buried in a maximum of three days as the horn fly eggs 
hatch in three days in summer. And we want to get them off our land. So this means we need around 1,000 dung beetles per cow or 100,000 dung beetles for a 100 cow herd. So that's a lot of dung beetles. And because the dung beetle's life cycle is around six to eight weeks, that means double or triple the time than the horn fly to be able to reproduce. And they also pr produce much less eggs than the horn fly. In my experience, it will take around one to two years of not using insecticides or deworming for the dung beetle population to attain those numbers and the horn fly to cease to be a problem. Number three, adapted genetics to the rescue. Some breeds of cattle and individuals in a breed will have greater resistance to horn flies reducing their performance even without insecticides. It is important to consider this as the horn fly is here to stay. They will not live. We need to select those animals that show a higher level of resistance to the horn fly. Observation in selecting bulls with high horn fly resistance is key. Remember the horn fly is attracted to testosterone, the masculine hormone, which is the reason they concentrate on bulls as opposed to cows. Be careful not to select low testosterone bulls as it will, this will have a harmful effect on your herd genetics. There are some animals that possess a natural oil or substance that repels insects without reduced testosterone. I explain how to select for masculine bulls in my adapted genetics selection guidance online course. Number four, if necessary, introduce dumb beetles to your grazing operation. When I started regenerating a ranch in Florida, there were no dumb beetles as the previous owners had applied excess chemicals for 23 years as it was a potted tree nursery. After a few months, it was clear there were no dumb beetles around. So I bought 400 dumb beetles and release them into fresh dung with the cow herd late in the afternoon. From there, they started to reproduce and a few years later, we had enough dung beetles so that the fresh manure disappeared in two to four days. Number five, what to do with the horn fly while your dung beetle population is not high enough? I have used a portable sprayer that is mounted on a sled with a battery powered pump to spray the cows with food grade diatomaceous earth mixed with dung soap and orange oil to kill the horn flies without harming the dung beetles. It is labor intensive and it will be much better to have adapted genetics so as not to have to use anything for the horn flies while the dung beetle population grows to the numbers required. You can find a video of my invention in YouTube under portable cow wash. I'm going to give you the formula that after one year of trials, I found to be the best. One five gallon bucket full of feed grade diatomaceous earth, one large bottle of liquid down soap mixed with one quart of orange oil. Then I fill the bucket with water as the powder absorbs a lot of water. And I mix it with a cordless drill with a paint mixer attached to it. I mix it very well. Then every time before spraying, I mix it again as the diatomaceous earth will settle down. The diatomaceous earth kills the horn fly when it dries in the coat of the cattle and the horn fly lands there. The diatomaceous earth cuts the horn flies so they dehydrate. The soap is used to maintain the powder suspended in the water and to stick the wings of the flies together so they cannot fly and they can dehydrate with the sun. The orange oil is used as a repellent. When the horn fly pressure is too high, it may need to be sprayed twice a day, so it is labor intensive. And you need to train the cattle to go, to go through the sprayer before you start. Another reason to consider parasites resistant genetics. Now that we have a larger population of dung beetles in that, in that ranch, there is no need to continue spraying with this dung beetle friendly mixture. It should only be used while you wean your cattle from insecticides to allow your dung beetle population to grow so that they can take care of the horn fly larvae. 
We may forget in the daily hustle that we are called to be stewards of the land and that we can profit from improving our land if done at a low cost using biological methods. In my mind, this is absolutely necessary as we will not only leave our land better than we got it, but will profit from the abundance we have created through our management. Conclusion and recap. Dung beetles are extremely important to your profitability and soil improvement. To increase their numbers and effect on horn flies and soil improvement, here are the five steps. Number one, stop using insecticides on your cattle and stop blanket deworming with the ivermectin family products as much as possible as they will kill your dung beetle population. Number two, grow a large population of dung beetles in your property. Remember, you need around 1,000 dung beetles per cow. Number three, adapt genetics to the rescue. Adaptive genetics being part of your herd will take you faster to achieve harmony between your ranch, your animals, and your pastures. Number four, if necessary, introduce dumb beetles to your grazing operation. Sometimes this is needed to advance faster. Number five, what to do to control horn flies while your dumb beetle population is not high enough? Well, you can go to YouTube under portable cow wash to see it. If this is feasible for your operation, let me tell you it does work, but it's labor intensive. Well, that is it for today. Goodbye, and make sure you subscribe to the podcast in Spotify, iTunes, or YouTube. You can also join us on the weekly email at www.rwranching.com slash join. Have a good day.